Sam, how you doing, buddy? Good, Gary. Uh, did you uh, did you see my text the other night? You saw Trump came out for Bitcoin, and he had a whole kind of Bitcoin little mini press conference at uh, Mar a Lago around his Trump NFTs. Did you see that? I did not watch the whole thing, but I did see uh, my friend Anthony Scaramucci complaining about why the Biden administration is allowing uh, Trump to take this position. I like Jesus. Poor Anthony, stupid. man. I, I, I just don't, I don't really get it. But well, uh, Here's what's even stupider is there was a bill around custody uh, that uh, Republicans and Democrats were voting on, essentially going against uh, one of Biden's recent pieces of legislation. And yeah. I can post all that stuff in the nest. And so you had every Republican vote in favor of Bitcoin custody. And you had, I think, 21 Democrats also vote in favor of it. But everyone was saying, oh, look at these Democrats. They're so brave. You have to follow them. And completely ignoring that the entire Republican Party also voted for pro-Bitcoin custody, which is just so funny to me because one of the reasons this community continues to shoot itself in the foot is they look at the margins and celebrate the margins instead of like, why would you not congratulate the entire Republican Party for backing a bill that's good for you? And why would you focus on a minority of these Democrats who are voting the way that you want them to and also completely ignore that now a mainstream presidential candidate is coming out as pro crypto. It's just it's so odd to me. Well, how do you explain it, man? I mean, because you're you're basically saying most of the Republicans voted for self custody, and there were what twenty four Dems that voted against. Yeah, I think it was about twenty one, and I can put I'll put it in the nest now. But it's it's because a lot of people in this space. In my opinion, and you know, I've I've been in meetings with these people, I've been in rooms, we've been talking politics for however long. A lot of the people that are leaders and CEOs in this space are actually Democrats. A lot of them are Democrats, not a lot of people realize that. And because of that, most of the conversation is never about dealing with the people who you like. It's how can we make Democrats pro-crypto, right? Which... I get it. You should want to do that. But if it's at the cost of not acknowledging that the people who are already supporting you are Republicans, it's just terrible strategy. So if you look at the tweet that I just posted, this is really interesting because this Sam Lindman guy, he's saying crypto is not a partisan issue, which it is. It's a generational one. Case in point, 21 Dems voted yesterday to rein in Gensler's overreach on crypto. The average age of this voting group, 48. Contrast these two young Gen Xers to the Dem Party leaders they defied with yesterday's vote. And then goes on to say Maxine Waters is 85, Joe Biden's 81, Elizabeth Warren 74. But that makes no sense because there's plenty of old people in the Republican Party. And the entire Republican Party voted yes. So that logical reasoning just does not make sense at all. So why are these people so obsessed with trying to say, hey, look at these 21 Dems who voted yesterday to rein in Gensler's overreach on crypto? Why is that the headline? And why is the headline not every Republican votes to rein in Gensler's overreach on crypto? Yeah, weird to me, man, that we don't make more noise about it. You know, it's just uh, what, what, what do you know what the um, what's the word for it? what the ratio of political position is as far as Bitcoin? I mean, oh, I would like think how many Republicans and how many Democrats? Are yeah, versus, you know, or, or more Bitcoiners, Dems versus Republicans. Well, Caitlin Long posted something. I have to see the exit poll data. Because I remember seeing these stats before, but she posted some tweet that I can post again, and it said like 62% of crypto holders voted for Biden uh, in 2020. Now, that is not Bitcoiners, that is crypto holders. Traditionally, Bitcoiners, of course, lean very libertarian, which has some right-leaning mechanisms. Right, And more often than not, libertarians will vote Republican more than they will vote Democrat. But if that stat's correct, and I know for a fact, like for example, Ryan Selkis, who was at the Trump event, 
who was speaking in favor of Trump voted for that's Biden. The, that's the Mascari guy, right? Huh? He, he yeah, was the Mascari guy. Yeah. The Mascari guy. He voted for Joe Biden in 2020. He voted for Joe Biden in 2020. He wasn't a outspoken Republican as far as that I've tracked until October 7th and everything that was going on in Israel. He switched and flipped and started becoming pro-Republican. But that means all up until October 7th of last year, he was a Democrat. So it's very fascinating to me, some of the dynamics, because you also think about on the state level, when you're talking about adoption in the political scene, what are the two leading states in Bitcoin and Web3 in general? They're Florida and Texas, which are very deep red states now. And the opposites of that are what? They're California and New York, which are heavily regulating the industry. And so when people say it's not partisan, and yes, there is some bipartisan stuff, but to say it's not partisan or becoming partisan, I think is so inaccurate because it's been so obvious that for the most part, when the leading states are Republican-led and those are the states that are being crypto-friendly, obviously that becomes a partisan issue. And if Elizabeth Warren and Biden, who are the heads of the Democratic Party, along with in the House, you'd have someone like Jim Clyburn, uh, and they're anti-crypto, that automatically means it's partisan. And so it's just, it's just interesting to me um, seeing some of this political news. Because anytime you wonder, why are we where we are today in the political landscape in America? It's just the strategy of some of these people just does not make any sense to me on the marketing side. I really, I just, I get it because I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to convert their uh, presuppositions and dispositions into reality. And they want the party that they believe in most to agree with them. But that means they're just not practical when it comes to, okay, you have one issue that you're fighting for. You have to support who is supporting that one issue instead of the party that as a whole you might align yourself with. So it just uh, it just drives me crazy because I've been seeing this now for, you know, since 2016, 2017. Rant over, rant over. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what happens when you end up with a bunch of professional politicians, dude. Like, as long as this system is like this, this will continue. It's just going to change names. Professional yeah. politicians, it's, it's a massive problem. Like, it's just ridiculous. You know, I was writing something today. Some of the stuff we've been doing lately, I, I, I really enjoyed what you and I and Inks did today on that YouTube, although it might not have been perfectly professional i love the conversation uh because it, it it's it's amazing to me i think how poorly informed educated aware we all are like like the bitcoin community should have spent more time talking about this particular uh vote that was last night correct yeah that was last yeah, night you know and i wasn't on top of that um and i don't remember hearing you know, that's a big deal. And the big to celebrate uh, the Republicans voting that way. We should, like, make a shitload of noise on it. I mean, that's this is going to be a big fight. Self-custody is going to be the fight. And you know what's crazy? Uh, when you think about, like, education, I don't know if you remember, but I asked when we did our fundraiser for Congresswoman Luna, I asked her that Bitcoin question. And she said, she said, you know, a majority of these people still believe crypto and Bitcoin are used for terrorism. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. It has been as the first the first D.C. focused chamber, I think, with Bitcoin chamber was founded in like 2014, 2015. I'm like, we've been advocating. We as in the community has been advocating in D.C. now for anywhere from eight to 10 years. And there's still that stigma and I went and I talked to uh, one of the aides, one of the legislative aides afterward. I was like, yo, what's the deal? Like, whoa, why is that? Why is it that uh, there's still this stigma? And he was like, you know, honestly, when we, uh, when we talk to these Bitcoin lobbyists, they're not really educating us. They're just talking about why we need to pass a bill. And I asked him, I was like, well, I mean, do you own any Bitcoin? I mean, the kid's my age. Uh, he's under 30. He's like, no, I don't understand how this stuff works. 
So I'm going to meet this kid for coffee, explain to him how Bitcoin works. And then it's like, that's going to be more effective than just simply going, hey, pass this bill. But we've been at this eight to 10 years. And it's no wonder that it's been so ineffective is because of just some of the strategies these people have been employing. It's really disappointing. And who are these people? These people... Is it the the institutional players, the 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 Caitlin's of the world, or is it... Who is it, man? I think it's some of the uh, big chambers of commerce, maybe some of the big Bitcoin crypto lobbyists who have been in the game for some time. I think it's now just transformed into like more of... You know, you can make a lot of money off of this as opposed to what is the actual strategy for winning. You know, what's funny is it reminds me of so conservation in the state of Florida. Uh, manatees, for example, this is so, going to sound stupid, but bear with me. Manatees are no longer going extinct. They're not on an endangered list. But because they're no longer on an endangered list, all these nonprofits are panicking because they're going to they're going to lose a lot of money. So these nonprofits that support manatees will actually lobby to keep manatees on the endangered list. Otherwise, they lose a lot of government funding and lobbying dollars. And that's actually true for a lot of conservation programs. And it's also true there was a big shift in actually the pro-life movement when Roe v. Wade got overturned. A lot of pro-life charities were super pissed off because then they're like, well, shoot, how are we going to fundraise now? So there is something to be said as far as fundraising goes. When there isn't a problem and you're too good at your job, it does, in the political world, it can hurt your revenue stream, which becomes a very tricky situation and scenario. But I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, maybe these people just aren't good communicators. I don't know. I don't know how the problem hasn't been solved yet. But if anything, the institutional money coming in, like the Black Rocks and Fidelities, I bet you we're going to actually solve most of those problems. And it's worth noting RFK Jr. how bullish he is on Bitcoin. Like he's over the top self custody. He's a fan of that as well. Um, I think it's worth talking about him because some of the polls suggesting that he may be a pretty feasible candidate. So between you know him and Trump, I I think it's a really optimistic sign uh, for Bitcoin this week. Yeah, I mean I um I'm not an RFK guy. I. I kind of know his purpose. I don't think his purpose is to win. I don't think he has any chance at winning. I would never vote for him. I'd never really give him, um, maybe I'd give him money. It depends on what my goal is uh, in giving him money. I know people like to give him a lot of attention, but really the key with him, as far as I'm seeing with polling data, is that right now he seems to be taking votes away from Biden. And so even though I won't vote for him, even though I think he has no chance at winning, and I think that's just a, a realistic take, I think anyone pretending otherwise just doesn't know the data or how our political system works. Well, they said that about Trump as well. They said he never had a chance, and everyone yeah, didn't believe Yeah, but Trump was a mainstream Republican candidate. So Trump won the nomination for the Republican candidacy. He was a mainstream party candidate. Far different. Non, Non-politician. Far, yeah, but far but, different. Far different. Um, than RFK, who's running now without a specific... If RFK was running as a Dem, or would have stayed as a Dem in primary, totally different story. Now I think his... Now what he's doing, and I'm not trying to sound like um, like I dislike the guy, I'm just trying to be as real with you as possible. What he's doing is he's making himself a decision maker in who wins, Trump or Biden, is what he's doing, which he's doing really effectively. Uh, but that doesn't mean he's going to win. It'll be Trump or Biden that wins, but RFK is going to be able to put pressure on that scale. So that's why I'm like, I, I can support RFK depending on what pressure he's leaning on, if that makes sense, Craig. Yeah, for I, sure. I, I, I agree that, that uh, I agree, look, I don't think Kennedy can win. I think it's not a good look that his family didn't support him. That's just a bad look, okay? One thing, his voice is not, like, ready for prime time. I mean, him and Trump are totally different. We need a disruptor, man. We need somebody that goes in there and just rips the freaking entire rug out from under this thing. Now, I'm not even sure he can do that, but that's the attitude we need. We need somebody that can level set this thing. Um, <clears throat> or, you know, the other side, I, I, I don't see how Trump can't win. Um, if people just show up and vote. 
I think if people just show up and vote, it's going to be hard. Uh, it's very interesting also that who would have thought, who would have predicted a year ago that Kennedy would cause more damage to Biden um, than, than he did to Trump, right? The, 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 I think the whole everything's changing so rapidly, Sam that the polls are going to really struggle this time to keep up with what's actually happening. I, I was at the F1 in Miami with a, uh, a very well-connected black gentleman, and he looked at me, he's like, bro, we're all voting. We're all voting for Trump. Black, 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 mixed black, black, white, black, Mexican, black, girl, boy, uh, I mean, he was like, there's just like, we have been so violated by this current administration um, that, and they're going to go out, you know, they're not going to be lazy. So it's, uh, some of you guys listening in the audience, you go through this and you go, oh, I don't want to talk about this. I want to talk about Bitcoin. But at the same time, like we do need to have a broader conversation about what's going on, because that is one of the ways if you're going to get into business the bigger your business becomes, it becomes really important to understand the, uh, the, the situation that you find yourself in. What are the rules? Are the rules changing? Especially when you're trying to do something in really disruptive environments or industries. Th this is one of the reasons I was really excited about having Sam join because I think it's going to add an angle to the way we think and talk, communicate. Uh, not, not that we need to spend all our time on politics, but on the regs, on the rules, and how to influence the future. Because I think people like Sam, 27 years old, see, I think they are our future. Like, I love him being involved with politics because we need someone. It, to your point, Sam, if, if these people are still saying, hey, this is just, you know, voodoo terrorism money, the education and marketing that was done over the last 10 years is so bad, right, that um, you're just going to have to go in there and have to fix it. You have to realize it's just been bad marketing because it's ludicrous. That you, well, let's think about the debate they had the other night. You know, the debate with uh, Narini and those guys, Narbini and Schiff. I, I don't think that did Bitcoin a lot of favors, that show. I, I wasn't... I, did anyone even watch I was, it? I didn't even. Re I watched maybe two minutes. I was like, "Okay, I'm bored." Yeah, I mean, I just didn't think that it was. I was like, I was, you know, we should have our pitch down by now, man. Okay, our pitch should be down. I mean, between our two Bitcoiners alone, excluding Rand, I mean, you know, there's thousands of Bitcoin being held between those two cats, dude. Uh, I was expecting more. And, and uh, we have to figure out how to, like, see, 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 when somebody comes up with bullshit like that, you cannot keep going past it. You have to stop it and say, hey, whoa, let's look at the facts on this. And you have to either confirm that they're right or you confirm that perhaps they were right at one time because I think Bitcoin probably was involved in a tremendous amount of illicit transactions in the early days. Look at the cats that were playing with this stuff, dude. They weren't even paying for the electricity. So, of course, they were doing some dodgy things, okay? That is the way all industries are created since the beginning of time. On the edges, right over the cliff, sometimes, you know, breaking rules. And as the business matures, everybody starts coming into the fairway, into the middle of the fairway, you know, because you, you start risking uh, a lot, for very little, right? But when you're developing the market, you have nothing to lose, right? You nothing to lose. You're just developing it. You start breaking some rules. You get bigger. You start putting those rules in. Um, I don't know why I got off on track on that, but we're if we're this should be very simple to educate people on with because we have facts and we have so much data. Um, I mean, Norini was talking about settlements. He was literally arguing with Eric about what the use of Bitcoin is. And, I mean, all you have to do is say, dude, we settle. This is a settlement platform. Okay, but we spend 20 minutes arguing with the, the institutional guys over peer-to-peer. -peer. 
like, and this is where we go wrong, I think. We start with peer-to-peer, and people are like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? It sounds crazy, right? Ten years ago. And we're still talking about using Bitcoin with data chips. It's very confusing to most people. Um, so I just think we sell the story wrong because we understand the story incorrectly, which is hilarious in itself. And, like, the story is changing, it's- right? I mean, I think that's the hardest thing for people to understand is with each wave of adoption, you have to tell a different story. And yeah, it can be similar about financial freedom, but different people are joining each time, right? The people who were adopting in, you know, 2017 and then before that in 2014 are a different type of person, right? And I think we get mixed up sometimes in the messaging and thinking uh, that we have to spew the same message, maybe just because it's easy or maybe it's because of what we we personally believe, but it's got to be different. You've got to cater your message. So I'll get off my, uh, my political shtick, but anytime I see stuff like that, I'm always wondering like, man, what is this community doing? Cause it's not, it's not too hard to be involved guys. Um, the fundraiser Gary and I did the cheapest ticket to meet your congressperson at the fundraiser was like a hundred bucks. Right. I think everyone here can afford a hundred bucks to then just go to an event where you're going to meet some very powerful people in your local area. I mean, we had formal mayors there. We had current uh, state senators and representatives there who all just show up to the fundraiser because it's like a gathering for them. You know, what a great opportunity to be like, hey, you know, I'm your local Bitcoin guy. If you ever have any questions, I'm here. It really is that simple sometimes. Uh, You'd actually be very surprised how easy it is to talk to some of these people about this stuff, even if it's just getting like a a 15 or, you know, 20 minute meeting. It's never out of reach. And I think that's one of the biggest disconnects for a lot of people, especially in like the uh, kind of libertarian communities is you just you kind of give up and go, well, why even talk to government at all? But you don't realize how easy it is. And when you build those relationships, they really do pay off long term. Uh, I would add to that, it's cheap. I had no idea until the other night. I, guys, I have never given any money to politicians, okay? Never until this year. Um, bro, I had no clue it was this cheap, okay? What he just told you guys, I hate asking people for money, so I just wrote a check and asked a couple of friends, hey, you guys think this is a good idea to throw it in there? Uh like 30 people could have come for 50 bucks to 500 bucks. Okay. And literally you're there for two hours. The drinks are free and you can meet 15 high quality people, ex mayors, mayor, Billy Bob, the council guy, the guy working on an $800 million Tropicana center. And he doesn't want anybody to know about it. You know, the 89 year old guy that knows about everybody's skeletons, you know, because this is a little town over here, like a hundred bucks, dude. You guys are buying eight thousand dollar free tickets to trade shows, listening to guys that uh, one hit wonders, made twelve million dollars, paid four million in taxes, and and now they're gurus. When Sam brings me the deal, I'm like, damn, dude! All my buddies could have bought the, bought a spot for a hundred bucks. I was stupid not to understand the value of that, Sam. My bad, dude. Well, what's nice is they ain't going anywhere in <laughs> his government. We can always do it again. But it's like, uh, and they're different types of events, right? I mean, they're not, uh, government events are interesting. I think you saw that, Gary. You're like, this, this is it. <laughs> you know, like, not a lot of fluff, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of flash. But then you start meeting some people. And what's crazy is you're like, wow, I just shook hands with the guy who, you know, built up my entire neighborhood or, you know, is the reason why there's certain buildings where I live or why certain city policies like, oh, there's a one lane road here because of this guy, (laughs) you know, like just the smallest stuff that actually is what impacts your day to day living. Uh, and that gives you those opportunities to actually have some face time with those people. It's very, it's very interesting. And it's such a low barrier to entry. It's like people just don't even know that you can go. And it looks good, too. It looks good on you. Hey, you know, I attended the Congress, whether you you think that's important or not, okay? 
But look, if you went to high school and college and got a damn degree because you wanted a piece of paper, don't, don't all of a sudden get all like pure and go, well, gosh, I'd give $200 to it and say that I was at a congresswoman's deal, right? Or met the mayor or was a, like, that can't possibly be bad for your resume. Um, it's real practical. I, I was surprised, dude. I've never done it before here and I should have. Um, because if I was if I was like your age, I would probably go straight into politics. I think that's where you can make the most money and take the least amount of risk. Yeah, it's certainly. I, I wish somebody would have told me that, bro. <laughs> it's certainly it's an interesting world. But um, do you want to talk about a uh, Bitcoin price, or do you want to call up some people, or what do you want to riff about next? I see my buddy Joe's. Well, here. we we've we've lost a few people. I think people do want to talk about Bitcoin. Yep. Uh, we've, I've seen a few people come in, but we can also ask the audience what they want to gen on. Cause I'm cool either way. It is up. Bitcoin's moving. I think we're up. We're going to probably go play with 63 again. Um, other than that, you know, I don't really watch the price every 12 seconds. So I'm very confident in my conviction and my, the beliefs that sound. I keep wanting Mr. Somebody to tell me why I'm wrong, and I've yet to find him, Sam. So, but yeah, let's have some pizza, man. Yeah, let me uh, let me let some people up here. Joe, what is going on, Joe? How you been doing, boss? Doing pretty good, man. Uh, taking my son for a walk in the afternoon. It's his favorite thing to do, and ripping with some guys about Bitcoin. So it's a good day. What have you been thinking about the price action in the in the regulatory environment and everything going on? Well, it's typical. You got a, you know, Warren-led establishment that's pushing back against uh, the perceived risk that could thwart the CBDC plans of her and her cohort. And then you've got the response, which is obviously a positive, where you now have a Republican candidate that has vocally embraced Bitcoin, um, a leading Republican candidate, and just called out Trump seems to be on the on the positive front, we'll see how it progresses, but there's multiple comments uh, where he's openly embraced Bitcoin and crypto, and I think that's a major step forward for the industry. I think it's something that um, is, of course, not priced in, because I do think he's going to win. I think ultimately Trump wins this election, uh, primarily because his, uh, his strength in the swing states is really something to behold. I think that'll influence Bitcoin, and for the better, you'll start seeing loose monetary policy, and you'll start seeing, um, you know, less hostile environment for founders in the Bitcoin space, which are, well, in crypto, right? You know, it's hostile right now in the U.S., and they're looking elsewhere. Dude, we'll, we'll, we'll see less missiles flying all over the fucking place. That's what my concern is. See, they can't beat us. I would love your comments, okay, but... They cannot beat us on the legal front. They they can squeak around, do whatever. But Trump was always going to be good for Bitcoin because he's good for capitalism. He's going to always, hey, oh, wow, we can get 2 million jobs? Let's roll, okay? Give some regulations, make it look like Wall Street. Let's rock and roll. He'll be fine for Bitcoin, man. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's the war we can't possibly have. Like, we cannot have this war, okay? This next war, we cannot have. It's either going to be censorship war, and that will come with the Biden administration. No ifs, ands, or buts. Censorship. Total censorship. Like they have in Canada. Anybody from Canada here? Please come up from Canada, okay? And tell these people what you're actually experiencing up there today, real time. Uh, it's a very different world, just like, you know, just north of that's it. me bro i'm here <laughs> in canada yo what is up yeah. hot saucer which by the way guys if you're a speaker especially but if you're here make sure you're retweeting the space so more people can hear what we're talking about because i think these conversations are incredibly important uh make sure you're leaving comments that we can read to down below hot saucer man what what's going on in canada you having fun up there yeah, so I mentioned in the previous space one thing i'm doing to help my like it's the cost of living up here it's just like a joke no one is getting ahead. Like, it's just a struggle. So uh, I'm mining Bitcoin to heat uh, both my parents' places. Like, in, in the basement, I set up 
you know, S19s, because, you know, with the carbon tax, you're paying, like, an absurd amount of money to use a furnace, right? So... How much is that? Can you get put some numbers on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give you everything. So, uh, started two years ago, and, you know, they were... Well, I, I bought them in 2022 when they were starting to drop, like, big, the miners. So, about three grand Canadian. It's about 2000 you know, 2000 bucks U.S., some import fees and taxes, right? But, you know, before the halving, they were pumping out good amount, good amount of Bitcoin, right? So you're making more than the electricity costs already. And then on top of that, you don't have any heating bill whatsoever. Because it was like, I don't know, $300 a month to heat your home. And, it's, you know, it gets cold up here, right? So zero that out. Plus, you know, I'm like the miners are already paid off completely. They're just printing right now. And, you know, the rewards have dropped since the halving, but they're still just ahead. But, you know, my long-term conviction on it is I'm just holding the Bitcoin. I haven't sold any Bitcoin. So I'm, I'm pretty confident about the whole, the whole prospect of it. So do you have that loud noise, though, in your entire house using to heat your home? Or what do you do? Is it yeah, so, the day? So um, you can get these. They're called uh, Cloudline S8. They're industrial fans. It's about 200 bucks. And they have, like, you know, full, like, two-year warranty. And they're super quiet. You just hook them up to the back. And I have, you know, we have um, forced air in both the houses. So you just hook those up to the, you know, the, the vents near the furnace, right? And then in the summer, you just switch it over to vent outside. What, what's the total capital cost? All the work you've done, the venting, the machines... Uh, the capital cost. So convert it to U.S. under five under well, five thousand U.S. and uh, yeah, they're they're paid off. Yeah, so all your capital costs have been paid off. So you're just printing uh, Bitcoin at this yes, point. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I, I like I was so happy because I was when I did it, man. Bitcoin was like in the gutter, and you know it was it was. It was breaking even, but now that the price is up, like there, it's it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, man. Good for you, man. What, so, what what can you and can you not do on social media in Canada? Oh, like it's just the people up here, man, are so soft. It's it's kind of crazy. Like I, I have a couple of my buddies that are conservative, and like we all get it, and you know we're we're just hustlers like we work our asses off and you know we we know how to invest and i got my bubble but everyone else is like diehard liberal and it's kind of scary like i don't i don't know what the fuck's going on up here excuse my language but it's it's kind of weird sort of like australia or you know a bit like new york maybe but it, people are kind of brainwashed you know they, they're like it's liberal at all costs and you know, even though, like, crime is through the roof, like, people, like, it, I don't know if you guys saw, but, like, people are trying to break into Drake's mansion the past couple of days up here in Toronto, where uh, the security guards are getting shot, and that's, like, what? Like, and Drake probably, they probably can't even have guns, the security guards, right? It's just not, not allowed, but the criminals can have guns. It's, like, it's kind of fucking weird, man, like, it's just like we're losing uh, our freedoms up here, if you know what I'm saying. I, I had a buddy who had a big Bitcoin mining operation in Canada, and I guess they did something where Canada attracted all these Bitcoin miners, and then they, at the last minute, did a gotcha, and were like, hey, we're going to start taxing you guys now, a huge tax for your Bitcoin mining. And all these Bitcoin mining operations had to move out of Canada. I think that might have been two years ago that they implemented that tax and it took about a year, six months to a year for some of these miners to move out. Um, so I don't know if any of you kind of remember that scenario, but it was kind of crazy. And so now the Bitcoin mining industry in, in Canada, I don't know how much is really left. It might just be people like you, hot sauce, yeah, they, they, just, uh, mining in their homes to stay yeah, warm. No, I think for just like the average residential guy, it's, it's considered a hobby up here. So it's like, a, it's a pretty low rate. For the tax side 
Um, but yeah, Quebec, I think they're starting to realize because there's a lot of um, dams with like hydro, right? Where they have like real, real cheap power and it was starting to get a little bit too much, I think. So they started to kick guys out and, and whatnot, but but man like well, my, what's the what's the tax ruling in canada on when you spent the five grand now you're in the money of yeah. just printing bitcoin how is the bitcoin when it comes into your wallet how is that treated in a tax code in canada um it's only if you sell it's only if you sell the capital gain as, like as far as I'm like as and what's your yeah. what's your short term, long term capital gain, uh, time period? Do you know? I I honestly from what I've researched, it's it's like because it's considered like a hobby. It was like a fifteen percent. Like it was like a super low rate the last time I checked. Oh wow! Yeah. So yeah. unless it's changed. Yeah, I'll see you Very interesting. Well, thanks for coming up. Appreciate the input. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, I see uh, the journeyman has his hand up, and it looks like he's from Ottawa, Ontario. So, what is up, fellow? Well, I shouldn't say fellow Canadian because I'm not a Canadian. <laughs> but what's up, the journeyman? Hey, hey, man. Uh, thanks so much, dude. Like, um, well, first off, I'm just going to say I hate it here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start what a thing words of encouragement for all comedians it's, it's it's quite garbage i i honestly don't understand uh well i i'm trying to uh in the sense that uh i, I just feel like they want us to own nothing and be happy with it and um you know with the whole capital gains tax increase eh. uh, and I, and i and i remember what you were you were just saying uh, about them taxing crypto miners it's uh, or Bitcoin miners in general, and that did come out. I think that came out in two thousand and eight or something. But there's there's like a new amendment to that tax act, um, and I'm looking at it right now, just off the CRA website, and and they're saying that um, in one of these sections, I don't know, one eighty eight point two, it defines what a crypto asset is, and for that that specific purpose of applying goods or services or harmonized, harmonized sales tax, GST, or HST to crypto asset mining activities. And so the tax treatment of a crypto asset is only determined after considering all the relevant facts, including its attributes, on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, that's, that's what I'm reading off the website. So it seems like they're actually just taxing and telling people to kind of keep a, a, an activity of what you're doing in crypto, which is also crazy to me because they, they obviously want to know how much you're buying and, and how much you're keeping. Um, and they're saying you should keep, also keep receipts associated with managing your tax affairs, such as accounting and legal costs and any third-party software costs and different types of software available to track it and blah, 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 blah. But I, I do think uh, that uh, they're, they're coming after anything we have. So I'm not a miner. I'm just a buyer. Uh, I've been in... I got started with Bitcoin... Through Gary's spaces, actually, last year, uh, I was here just figuring out what it was, and you, this space, I think, gave me a lot of reading material, which I got into, and then I started buying. And ever since I've been buying since last year, I've just been learning more and more about it, uh, and it just makes me kind of more addicted to just stacking. Um, but in terms of what's happening here in Canada, they, they are just fully trying to put control on everything, I believe, just not even crypto, but also housing. Um, if you look at quality of life here, it's just going down uh, with the 25% year-over-year carbon tax increase. And none of this material or money is going towards any of the debt that they're paying off. I just feel like it's going into their pockets, and that's that's just the perspective I'm putting out there. That may not be uh, that may not be uh, identified or defined, but I just I just think they're stealing from us. What um what would it take for you to move out of Canada? Um, are you staying there just because, you know, family and friends and stuff, which is a totally valid reason to stay anywhere? Or are you well, no, serious? actually, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in six months. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, where I'm, are you moving? <laughs> I'm figuring out a way to do a work-from-home thing with my current job here. And I work with the government. I work with the Department of National Defense here in Canada. So I'm, I'm a project manager for, for them. Um, so I, I'm trying to figure out how to do a work-from-home situation because even in the government right now, they're telling people to go back into work three days a week and they're trying to enforce people not to stay at home uh, against 
kind of their will, even though we've been productive at working wherever we're working for a really long period of time. And now just not being able to see my face makes me unproductive. So I'm like trying to figure out how to file grievances, how to fig uh, figure out how to just get a work from home going, or maybe even say like my, my parents have moved somewhere and I need to go take care of them. And, uh, I got anxiety working at work or just something, you know, that I can get a work from home thing from, and then just leave because this is horrible. That's wild. Thanks for coming up and speaking, man. All right. I see we got a few more hands macro. Oh wait. Yeah. Macro minutes. What's going on? Facility engineer, Bitcoin mac maximalist weather nerd. Weather nerd. What does weather nerd mean? I don't know. But what's going on, man? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I uh, I guess a quick quick uh, info on that. I was going to do either engineering or meteorology and decided to do engineering because I felt it'd be uh, broader, more broadly applicable to life than meteorology would be. But uh, it's still something I've always been interested in ever since I was a kid. So. Anytime there's a big weather event going on, um, I'm generally just keeping up with it because it just kind of interests me. So that would be come to Florida, man. We got plenty of hurricanes for you to monitor. Yeah, man. No, I um, I've been in a couple of them up here in uh, like Virginia, North Carolina. So I know it's nothing uh, nothing like some of the crazy ones y'all get down there. But um, I'm definitely the person who would be interested in going towards the severe weather, not away from it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so what are your thoughts on some of what we've been talking about yeah no i actually hopped up because you guys uh early on in the conversation were talking about you know being able to get access to people who are engaged politically locally and was just kind of curious i uh, hadn't chatted with you uh in a bit gary are you um aware of the digital chamber event that's happening in in dc next week slash um are you going to be at that you guys know anything about that that's going on? I can share stuff in the nest if you're interested. Yeah, I'm very aware of of their work and what they do. Their uh, their founders actually from my hometown and lives in Florida, so they do uh, they do some very interesting work. And actually, one of their representatives is going to be in Miami Friday speaking in an event. Or no, I'm sorry, Saturday. Um, so yeah, they're great. Yeah, no, I completely agree. We've, we've had them on our, our uh, mining show on Thursdays a couple of times, um, especially when there was some of the litigation going on earlier on in the year um, around the mining space. So it's always interesting to, to see what they have going on. And I think um, it's definitely, if you are um, interested in or into mining in any way, um, or if you're, you know, working in just the broader energy fields. I think uh, if you're near DC, it's a, uh, it's a good event to try to go to if you're, you know, within a, an easy day's drive. Yeah. Dude, it's really good having you up here, man. I w wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, and yeah, thank you for that input. See guys, those are the kind of things. If you're in Bitcoin and you're around Washington, uh, I mean, I know you'd probably like, Hey, why would I go? Well, um, if you need a job and you like crypto, I, I would go hang out where there are people in crypto, right? And th these are real people. I mean, they're, they're so much going on. I can't believe all this is getting done without some type of, you know, royalty being paid by all the Bitcoin miners or somebody just to support a centralized committee. It drives me crazy, Sam. Uh, but Mac, I wanted to ask a different question because uh, you've been doing these spaces, I think, for some time. What, what are you seeing, man? I, I think this will be very interesting for the audience, actually. Maybe we just pivot on the conversation here. What are you seeing on your platform uh, as to, uh, well, maybe tell the audience what your platform kind of specializes in. And then are you seeing a change in the audience? And if so, how, how would you kind of generally describe it? Because I'd like to just kind of socialize some things I'm seeing across social media, some of these rooms uh, there that i find interesting yeah sure thank you so f first and foremost uh i'm a one of the co-founders of the bitcoin daily we have a show every morning um 8 to 10 a.m eastern and then on weekends we go from 8 a.m to 12 noon and uh, each day we focus on a specific topic within bitcoin um and we are bitcoin specific uh so mondays we have a show specifically focused on meetups, just helping people find local meetups, um, talking to founders of meetups all over globally. 
And um, then Tuesday, we talked to content creators, uh, people like BTC Sessions that are putting out good signal, teaching people how to use hardware wallets, um, teaching people how to, you know, secure their their Bitcoin in a way that is um, minimizing their attack surfaces. Wednesday, we have a 101 show, which is for just very basic intro level questions. Um, anybody can come up on stage and ask anything. No question is, is dumb. We'll answer any of them. Uh, Thursdays, I do the Bitcoin Mining and Energy show. That's a much more in the weeds, nerdy show where we're focused on, you know, power generation, um, energy markets, Bitcoin mining, building out um, things like that, uh, building out mines. My co-host, Brad, has helped build out over 400 megawatts of um, total mining infrastructure globally. Uh, so he's very knowledgeable. Um, and then uh, have a, a few other shows. Um, Saturdays they talk um, basically like macro, uh, anything going on in the legal world. Um, we have a lot of the guys um, that are tied into like what's going on in Wall Street on that show. And then um, Craig, so are, you, are you seeing an increase in your audiences and or quality? How's that? How are you seeing the, you know, are you seeing a change at all? So I would say actually, surprisingly, post ETF launch, um, things were very hot. I'm sure you probably noticed as well. Some of your spaces were getting up there in like the high hundreds, low thousands numbers some days where people were very interested in what was going on. And then um, I would say right around the time that price flatlined for a bit and we kind of had this pullback, we actually started to see our, our listeners uh, drop down a bit, but we had people who were not so much focused on the number go up kind of questions, but actually asking more, I would say detailed questions relevant to the topic at hand for the day. And um, I'm, I'm very interested to see if we start seeing more new people come in as um, I think later this year, Q3, Q4, we really start to, to move up again beyond previous all time highs. I think you're going to start to see, see numbers go up a lot. But I would say actually to, to our surprise, you know, we've been consistently running daily. We have not missed a day since January 1 of this year, right? And um, we've had a pretty consistent weekly listener uh, number that has been fairly flat since the ETF stuff died down. Um, it's starting to grow again now, but uh, I would say the quality of questions has actually improved, but the quantity has declined. Did you say you run seven days a week? The the uh, the Bitcoin Daily runs seven days a week. Yes, well, that's correct. Well done, man. How many, uh, or your model is it a subscription model or is it a uh, advertising model where the advertiser promotes? Yeah, so we're we're um, gonna be looking at a few different things. We're thinking probably ad model. Um, we've got some sponsors that are interested already that we're talking to, and um, we've been working on kind of setting up some of the legal stuff because we've actually got a pretty big volunteer group right now. It's a bit of a passion project for most of the people that are involved. Um, but we've been transparent with everyone from day one that we do intend to, to monetize, which is why we're being very consistent with our content and, and making sure, you know, now I'm not necessarily there every day, right? But the, the host account, which actually I'll, I'll share in the nest really quick for anybody that's interested, um, that host account is what we host all of our spaces through. And um, there is something every day run by that account, 8 to 10 a.m. And um, we're going to be building out some other stuff that uh, we haven't announced yet. But when we do, I'm, I'm, I'll definitely reach out to you and um, hopefully we can talk about it in a, in a future spaces because we've got some things that we're, we're pretty excited about. One thing that is already um, public is um, the minor mastery that Brad is doing it is a part of the Bitcoin conference this year. It's the leading two days there. Um, so we are going to be affiliated with that and having uh, an affiliate link where people can get uh, tickets, I believe, at a discounted price um, if anybody's going to be going to the Bitcoin conference. But yeah, that'd be a good promotion for you. Yeah. So that'd that's, be great promotion for you. How many, how many uh, subscribers do you have? Um, we don't have subscribers yet because there's no subscription um, currently, but we're averaging between 3,500 and 5,000 weekly listeners right now um, pretty consistently. We have wow, that's awesome, started, dude. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because we just started in January. So and, and you do like one-hour slots, right? One, two-hour slots? Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a two-hour show, uh, but we try to break it up to keep it interesting. Um, so most days we have a feature guest if we can doesn't always work out that way. It's hard to have a feature guest seven days. Yeah. Away. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. Cool, man. Well, congratulations. You guys follow this cat. I, I, I like the, the content. Oh, one other thing, man. You said, you know, you're B, you didn't say you're BT only, and then you talked about BT sessions, BTC sessions, which is he follows quite a few things, right? He doesn't just follow Bitcoin. Um, I believe he's he's Bitcoin only. Um, is he? BTC sessions, yeah, because he does a lot of like hardware content specifically. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no. I, I know. I mean, I I love that guy. I just think he's such a wonderful human being. Um, oh yeah, okay. I didn't realize that. So you're just Bitcoin, like. You, you, nobody's walking in and talking uh, uh, Richard Hart to you. Yeah, yeah, we, we are Bitcoin focused. Um, That's cool. So, you know, if, if somebody wanted to come up and, and they had a, a legitimate question, a good faith question, we'll have the conversation. But um, right now we're, we're focused on Bitcoin only. And I, I don't see that changing uh, based on the, the founding team. We're all Bitcoin only guys. But um, we're definitely trying to create and cultivate a mature space that will allow for people to come up and ask questions and not basically be shouted down or told they're an idiot. Like we're gonna Yeah, bro. That's beautiful, man. Right. It, we there, there, there's so much value here. We can educate. You know the point earlier about you know that we got senators that still think this is a drug dealing uh, coin shows you the marketing is really poor, right? So I do think that I see a very different category of conversation occurring right now. It's almost like uh, X is maturing a little bit. Um. Dude, I'm so glad that having an ETF is over because as soon as it finished, I'm like, okay, I'm not doing any more of this. I don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about the having. It's done now, which is, okay, poof. It's just a moment in time, right? Um, now the real, the real show starts. So anything we can do to collaborate to make sure we're bringing quality education, man, I, I will work with you in any way I can. So. Thank you. Uh, I, I can't keep bitching about how bad the education system is and not do something. Um, we just need people that can tell stories that c common people can understand and effectuate. And uh, guys, to my point, I do not know this gentleman very well. I think I've talked to him one other time like this on a space. Um, what you just saw me do was interview him. Uh, it greet him at the same time, develop a relationship with him, but at the same time, get the Gary Cardone, the business guy, is interviewing and surveying him very, very aggressively, okay? I don't know if he felt that. I hope he didn't. Uh, but I'm trying to find out, you know, the size of his audience, what the demand is, what, you know, his people. Now, what I found out a lot of interesting things. Uh, It'd be interesting to actually dissect the things that I took from that and, and kind of the way I obtain information. But one of my gifts is to share with you guys is, hey, everything I'm doing on these shows is literally a uh, Sam has seen me interview people. And I won't I will barely say anything to them before I meet them because I want the interview to, to look like and to be, hey, this is how you meet someone you've never met before. Right. And you have a conversation. And how do you probe into that person's life? Granted, I have permission, but how do you probe into that person's life and make it interesting in an hour without like I never I'm so glad Sam's here because he pulls people up. He says, no, let's see. We have somebody from North Carolina here. I've never looked at anybody's resume uh, when I'm popping popping somebody up here. So thanks a lot for being here. Um that was fun, and I learned a lot more about you and your company. I really wish you well, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate you giving me uh, giving the floor a bit. And then just one last thing. I threw in the nest um, the next show that I'm hosting next Thursday with uh, Bob Burnett. He's a very knowledgeable guy in the mining space. So if any of you guys are interested in that, please stop by. And if you're interested in any of the other topics, the host account is right there as well. So please give that a follow. Uh, we've, like I said, we have shows every day. So thank you. Nice. Thanks for coming up, man. And yet, yeah, believe it or not, I'm always looking at y'all's profiles. Do you think I'm going to let you come up here and Sorry. speak and not take a not take a peek at what's about to go down and happen? Some of y'all have the the funniest freaking bios. I'm always like, okay, what what are we about to get in here? All right, Zachary, Chief Bitcoin Officer, what's going on, man? I see you got your hand up. 
Hey, hey, how are you guys doing? Gary, we love watching your Bitcoin journey in these spaces. They're a lot of fun. Thanks for doing them. The, uh, you called the Canadians up, and so I thought I'd pop up. I'm in, Matt, I'm in, uh, I'm in Alberta, and uh, the gas year over year at my pump is exactly around like 13%. 13% inflation on my gas at my pump year over year in Alberta. And uh, which uh, we, only, we only have like, we don't, even do, we don't have a provincial sales tax. We're a very unique province here in Canada, but it's, uh, that is bad. That's insane how expensive it is there. What, 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 what is that, a liter or a gallon? Yeah, it's a liter. W what is it? How much? Well, it's up 13% year. Yeah, yeah, but I want to know how much it's it is. It's $1.54 a liter. Dollar fifty four Canadian a liter. That's a dollar twenty five. That's four. That's two fifty five dollars a gallon. What you bitching about, man? Really? What you bitching about? Oh, come on. Hey, I need somebody from Germany or somebody <laughs> from the UK to pop up here, okay? And tell this little bitch what gasoline really costs, okay? Well, either way, it's up thirteen percent year over year. So that's loss of purchasing power, which is what I care about. To I agree with you, man. I totally agree. I'm just kidding you. And, and, and that's in your backyard, right? You got so much fuel, it's all over the place, and you're paying it's $5. It's so sad. It's so sad. It is. Yeah. All right, yeah. what is going on? Uh, what's going on, J-Man? What's going on, J-Man, J-Crypto? How you been doing? Yo, what's up, Sam? How you doing, brother? Good. Can I, uh, can I out you? Can I tell, uh, tell Gary that you were at our event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I peeped him a little bit. He looked a little busy, so I didn't want to bother him when he was uh, talking to his people, but... Yeah, did he? Gary, he uh, Jay of, Crypto was at our, our well, Luna well, event. He was able to come up and uh, oh, was with it? us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was gonna. There was uh, there was a part in there. I told Sam. I said uh, I was I was gonna say something, but I didn't want to go on a on a watch list for being uh, an extreme radical. <laughs> <laughs> right, because that's what um, we got to worry about with you. What uh, what you been up to, man? What's been going on? Got any comments on? Bitcoin price or what we've been talking about politics or if you want you can dig on Canada I guess that's one of the themes today. yeah a little bit all of it I mean RIP to the person that's leaving Canada I mean mind you we are um we're just you know looking at different news sources but should we really believe it but there was something that came up that uh they're they're imposing a, a higher exit tax for for those residents that are denouncing and leaving so RIP whoever was going to leave sorry for that buddy um yeah, but no, this is uh this has been an exciting time. Um yeah, you know, there was a lot of hype on 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 the ETF and and also the the, the second ETF that opened up the uh world jurisdiction which was Hong Kong and uh, now that a lot of that hype is gone, um you know, it's just kind of funny because I've been uh, as soon as I touched crypto and it changed my life, I've been, you know, kind of like a network marketer, right? Cause I've done that in the past, but, um, and I've been, uh, trying to get a lot of my family, um, involved into this, even to the point of where, where I've been sending them <laughs> or just keeping a wallet for them, you know, and I say, listen, this is what happened to my gift to you. It actually went up, you know, two, three, five hundred percent, which is fantastic. Um, so they uh they they're they're slowly coming in, but it wasn't until you know BlackRock was advertising, Fidelity was advertising that they saw it was kind of real at that point. And I I was like, I was like, that's what it took. You know, your love and trust for me it wasn't enough that you just had to listen to the people to actually manipulate all this stuff. Oh, this is this is uh this is been great, but you know it it it, it has been um. It has been a crazy journey for all of you. For those of you who's been in, you know, here for pretty much all the cycles, you're, you're, you're used to all this stuff, right? Some of us only been in two or three cycles, you know, since 2017 or whatnot. It's been, uh, it's been, it's, you know, kind of expected some kind of that for all those that are new. It's been, uh, you know, this is, this is the kind of the norm for us. You know, there, there's your ups and your downs. Don't, don't let it discourage you. You know, it's, um, it's something that, uh, that, you know, it's just bound to happen. And, uh, and I know this is a, a, a Bitcoin chat, but we, you know, I'm a, I'm pro crypto on everything, right? As long as it's, it's something solid with some technology behind it. Um, and, uh, and solid backing, then it, it, it's something that, that I, 
I push for, right? So, I mean, there's good privacy products, there's good uh, DeFi protocols, you know, all of that nature. Sure, that that's coming up on, on it's been there on Bitcoin, that kind of deal. But, you know, for, for me specifically, it's it's always good to, to kind of diversify and not put all your eggs in one's basket, even just in crypto, but, you know, maybe in life too as well. So that's kind of kind of my teachings in, uh, in, in what I've kind of gone through my journey. <laughs> It's always so funny talking to your family about some of these things because even like some of my some of my family are into into Bitcoin, others are still like on edge. And of course, I'm a huge believer. But even my own family, I'm like, listen, man, if you don't get it and you don't feel safe, you know, I'm gonna I'm not gonna force you to do anything. I'll buy some for my nieces and nephews and keep it in a little wallet for them and just you know handle it. But it's always kind of funny just being like, yeah, you don't trust me, but you trust BlackRock. What kind of what kind of relationship do we have? You're just telling them that, that you know they they get it they'll get it when they deserve it to get it okay that that <laughs> when, when they they can move from their abyss of low IQ and move up the food chain <laughs> and then and only then can they get it that's when they deserve it it doesn't that's, seem like people move up the food chain in life though well there's always really gonna be, the right there's, there's always going to be ninety eight percent bro. Yeah, exactly. The ninety-eight, like guys, it, you know, someone's gonna fit along that band. It's just the numbers. I, it's, I, I don't even know what people argue and debate over. It's like it's always been that way. I agree, and I don't think that it's it's because it's suppression. Exactly. I, I don't. I don't buy that. Uh, like I shouldn't be here. I've had a great life. Uh, now, I have felt blessed to be born in the United States. That I want. Uh, that was a lottery ticket for me. I, I was always stunned. I'm like, wow, I got lucky, man. I could have been born in Jippy Jippy, right? Um, so that that that's why I really I love Bitcoin, but I really love these platforms where we can have conversations and discuss. The greatest threat to us is censorship. What's happening to the guys in Canada, I was hoping one of these guys would say, hey, we're forbidden or we're blocked from accessing certain social media sites. That's uncool, dude. Okay? I mean, to me, if, if something is legal, people should be able to access it without being monitored. Period. Um... So it's really it really scares me, okay? That we're we're actually well, people shouldn't shouldn't see certain pictures, really. Well, that's censor, censorship, guys. That is censorship. I actually would prefer in a war situation to see the dirty pictures, the messy pictures, and then maybe we won't turn our eye to, oh gosh, we're actually complicit in this shit because we're not saying no, we're not saying stop it. Uh, our voices have been clipped. So, to me, the, the window here we have on this platform, and the reason I'm doing this, most likely I'll be blocked, stopped, or whatever, but we do have to try. And we have to start voting with our actions, right? Our, no, this is not okay anymore. Stop it. Um, I mean, really. And, and a lot of things are unwinding right now out of control from these chaos merchants that it's unwinding this is the time we have to really step on it because i think i think a lot of things are being discovered uh being uncovered in this like it's the age of aquarius a chick told me that the other day i went dude you know what it feels like the age of aquarius it feels like 1960 to me where people are beginning to ask questions a lot of them and there's being a lot of things are being revealed about the social fabric of our uh, uh, the, the fabric of our society. So that's what I like talking about because that will get us through, guys. If we can bond on what we agree on, freedom, uh, we don't have to get stuck on the little bullshit. Okay, little tiny details, whether I self custody or whether I have a ETF or whether I do it all, because I love it so much, I want all of it. Uh, th these are nuances. Right. So anyway, Kyle, what's up, man? How we doing, bro? Yeah, Kyle, what you got for us today? What comments you got on anything we've been talking about? Well, um, 
it's funny you guys are talking about Canada. I'm, I'm a Canadian. I left about 10 years ago, moved to California, and I literally just moved to Newport Beach here uh, a couple weeks ago. So I know all about uh, Canada, born and raised there. And I saw the writing on the wall uh, when I was in college. So the grade point average, so the number one uh, university in Vancouver is uh, UBC. And the grade point average got, so I'm a local country boy, school wasn't really my thing, but I was really smart and I was good at sports, so I could get into universities, but the grade point average at the best universities were unattainable, and it's pretty much like 90% Asian, and the reason the, the cultural difference is you grow up in the country, you're running around, school's not really that thing. And you, you're going up against a guy who's doing 10 hours a day homework. It just changed the culture of the country. And now you see it where they just let the floodgates in and the place is a shithole. And anybody that wants to make a million dollars has got to leave Canada, right? If, if you're a self-made guy. I'm not talking about doctors and lawyers who go to the best schools. But if you want to be make somebody out of yourself from nothing, you got to get out of Canada. And I'm living proof of that. So... I, I've, I've also jumped on the Bitcoin bandwagon. I got in at around 15 grand, and that's when I started uh, following Gary. And I really want to know, uh, my question is, the, the, you know, to get rich, you got to identify value and apply leverage. What do you guys think about these rules they're, they're trying to implement with the leverage on Bitcoin? Like, they're really trying to take the leverage out of the, out of the game. Like when you say leverage, are you talking like actual leverage, like uh, you know, using other people's money and loans and whatnot, or no, so, what you're so right to? now, so like the margin. So right now, I got about a million in ETF and I got a million uh, self custody. So the self custody, I haven't, I haven't leveraged it at all. I've just parked it and just sitting on my walls. I actually bought it for my kids. Right, that was like my my um, exit strategy. But with the ETF. They're trying to, so you can't put it into your margin account. So let's say I buy a million dollars with the Bitcoin. I can't leverage a million dollars, right? They're, they're trying to change the laws where you can't leverage the ETF. I don't know if you guys heard of that or you got any comments on that, but I'm really interested in where that's going because that, that really changes uh, uh, the dynamic. You know what I mean? Actually, I didn't see that. Did you see that, Gary? That they're trying to stop leveraging of the ETFs? I, I didn't see that. Well, I think if... I'll have to ask, man, but I think that if I go to Fidelity, let's say I have, you know, a million dollars, in your case, in Fidelity, and um, you know, let me just think this. Why, why would that... So, okay, so Gary, if you had a million dollars to Amazon... You can margin that and buy the ETF. Exactly. I, I, but no, I but don't. if you had the million in the ETF, you can't leverage that. You can't get a million anymore. So you're no longer allowed to put your ETF into your margin account. Well, I, I know people that will let me do that. Really? Well, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to, Biden's yeah, trying to change might, the law. You, you may not like the terms right now. Hey, that's all coming, bro. That's why, that's why I got Sam involved. Okay. There's enough regulatory stuff. Look, guys, Bitcoin is here to stay. We now will have legal battles for years and years. Okay, there will be legal battles, and we will win. Okay, because the old system's just breaking down. So this isn't. This is just the normal process of things. Okay, y'all remember Enron, right? Like, that was a travesty, okay? The, the, the guy, let, let, let's remember how big Enron was. And the reason I'm bringing that up was that was a, Enron was basically the entire restructuring of the electric and natural gas markets in the world, in the free market world. Okay, like, there was so much advancement made during that period of time. Um, and by the way, they, they predicted that we would be trading bandwidth in micro transactions, problem was they were 25 years early, right? It just didn't work back then. So just another another uh, message of being first is not always the best, in my opinion. I think it's the worst strategy in the world, actually, being first. So where, where was I going with that thought, Sam? Because I got off track here. Um, uh, the ability whether you can leverage. Yeah, so I, I think I can leverage. I, 
I'll, I'll, I'll check, man. But I found that very surprising. I know people that will do that for me right now. Um, and it'll all, it'll all be available. And the reason it's all going to be available is because the banks will make more money with leverage. So it's coming, man. Um, no doubt it's coming. But I hear you that right now it's, it's, not, it's not adopted. 16,000 professional salespeople, professional ETF salespeople from Morgan Stanley are having their electronic leashes removed sometime in the next four weeks. And they will become like wild wolves, okay, on, on a full moon night, tracking down any rich people to move them into the ETF because they have been given the green light to push it now, sell it hard, and they make commissions on it. And it's, guess what? We only got eight months for the end of the year, guys. Tick-tock, commission clock, right? This is just human nature now. So the markets will move. Man, I, I, I'm not worried about all that stuff. This this is, I, I got it, that Kyle, that it's difficult, but... Um, and look, I'm in a similar position, dude. Okay, I have. When you bring it up, I have stuff that's stuck in things that, you know, if I was really smart, I'd unwind everything and go to a digital bank. Actually, anyway, that's my that's my thought on it. Anyone else? I certainly don't have any further comments on that. But that's a pretty interesting question, and that's something that I'm going to have to. I didn't even know that, Kyle. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, it, it, they're, they're literally trying to, Biden's trying to pass the bill right now where really you cannot leverage, you cannot put your ETF into your margin account. Oh, yeah, that was that, just that recent thing. He, yeah, dude, he's an idiot, though, dude. Now, this has got to get passed, okay? By the way, it's, it gets passed and then it can be appealed. Yeah, okay. No, so it, gets, it sounds crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. It's yeah, just they crazy. Are, hey, you know why, bro? They are crazy. <laughs> okay. So well, like it should be so when it starts making sense, we should all get worried. <laughs> wait, wait until there's bonds. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> what would that look like, I wonder? That would be coming. That would be coming. That's gonna be great. <laughs> not not great actually, no. Then they'll start selling dirty bonds. You know you know how those banks go. <laughs> oh <laughs> Yes, yeah. Ryan Lee, what's going on, man? Ryan, my buddy uh, Riley Caps follows you, and you are a plant breeder and into cannabis. What brings you to this space, my man? Ryan Lee, that's all you. I see you with your hand up. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, I, I like your spaces, Grant. I enjoy following you. I, I, listen, I've been in, in Bitcoin ah. for a long time. I've been in, I've, I've been in Bitcoin for a long time. Um, <laughs> I, I, we run a seed shop out of Europe and, um, you know, credit card payments, that kind of stuff has always been a problem um, for the cannabis world. Even though the seeds are legal, the credit card companies don't like being associated with anything on that side. So we got into Bitcoin, you know, 2013, 2014 for accepting payments. I bought my first Bitcoin at 900 US from a, a, an ATM in Canada. Canada had the first uh, Bitcoin ATMs in the world. Um you know, under three thousand dollars, there's no financial reporting, so you you can be buying and 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 moving money that way. Um, you know, once you once you hit certain levels, obviously there's declarations that you have to do with the, with the government. Look, we all got to pay taxes. It's part of society. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes doing it, but it's it's part of the rules, right? It's part of what keeps society going. So I'm the type of person that kind of Not thinks you know you pay you pay your fair share. And, or, or you pay your share, put it that way, and you move on. Um, Bitcoin is really, for me, you know, I, I, it's, it's changed the way I look at the world. Um, it provides us a, a, a way to get around this controlling system that we live in. I'm an apolitical person. I'm a political person, but I'm an apolitical party kind of person. I think that both sides are fucking idiots. Um, and, and being neutral allows you to, like, point out the hypocrisy on both sides. So I, I don't align with anybody on the right or the left on any given issue. I think it's best to stay kind of independent and be able to think of things on an inter, on a, like, an issue-by-issue issue basis. And, uh, you know, I, I come from this real science-based background. 
Um, and I, and I kind of use that lens to look at the world. I disagree with a lot of what's been said up here about Canada. I mean, I've, I've lived in different parts of the world. I worked in the States for a few years on contract. I had a TN visa down there. And I, so I lived there between 2013 and 2016, you know, in a time when the U S was still feeling the pinch of the, the economic crisis in, uh, in, in 2008, 2009. Um, so I, so I also have seen both sides. I, I don't think Canada is a disaster. I, we have actually one of the better taxation schemes for crypto of anywhere else in the world. You know, we pay capital gains. We don't, we don't have long-term gains, short-term gains. Essentially you pay on the gain when you sell. Um, and yeah, the government, the current government, you know, look, they're trying to pay off this debt that we've accrued over the last, call it four years since COVID began. Canada had, you know, we, we've essentially doubled our national debt since the beginning of COVID, since 2019. We've doubled our national debt in a period of time when interest rates have tripled. Um, and so when we're talking about gas prices and food prices and all the stuff that you hear being talked about in Canada, a lot of these pains are associated with this big amount of money that we dumped into crypto, or not into crypto, sorry, into COVID, right? Like there was a, the, we, we gave a bunch of money away in, in 2020 to the citizens that were, that were off work. And, and look, you, there's, there's no, as we all know, there's no free money printer, right? When you print money, you give it away. That all has to come back in the end. And as, you know, as people does that are educated. Does it though, man? What do you mean? Print, it does not have to be paid back. Why, why does it? And when has well, it, it has been to paid back? somewhere, right? Why? Like, why? I think this is a great myth. I got to tell you, man. I, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but it, it, if it's created out of thin air, it, it by definition does not have to be paid back. It could be extended. Look, but I don't think in the history it's ever been paid back. The money that you hold on any given day is really a fraction of the total money supply of the country. So when the, when the comp, when the country prints more money, the percentage of that money supply that you hold goes down. Right. And that, that's really what's affects your buying power. Yeah. I understand. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm not, a, like I said, I'm a plant scientist. I'm a, I'm a cannabis nerd. I'm not yeah, a, a financial but, but, guy like a lot of you. Yeah, well, well, yeah, but you know what? I mean, cannabis has some interesting qualities to it that, that would be, analogous to this conversation i've never been interested on the cannabis just normal strain farming side of the business because i like dude you can grow it in a house under lights Ooh, that's uncontrollable supply now let's say i want the really exotic stuff awesome but um isn't fiat similar to that and that the price of marijuana will continue to go down uh grade by grade assuming grade stays relatively same isn't that true? Well, it's supply and, like cannabis is supply and demand, and demand is you know it's demand. No, no, you have an unlimited supply if you want to. You do agree with that, right? Uh, it's, unlimited. It's, it, we do, but it's constrained by regulation, or at least they try to constrain. Uh, okay, but, but let's, okay, but it's the same Bitcoin conversation. See, I, I think that's why it's really analogous, and I find it ironic that the guys probably getting richest on Bitcoin or the guys that were taking Bitcoin because the payment companies made it so stupidly difficult for you uh, while they sell dr while they sell alcohol like hand over fist one of the most lethal drugs in the world uh, it's so Hippocratic it's such a hippo uh, Hippocratic uh, environment um, but don't you think they're similar, man? Because I, I do think there's an unlimited supply within 180 days of marijuana if one wanted to. If the price was $5,000 an ounce. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I kind of... So we, I mean, we, we put a lot of marijuana, man. Supply. I mean, I would, I would say it's, it's, it's kind of more like Dogecoin, right? <laughs> like the, you know, it's, 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 more it's more like a commodity. Yeah. It's like any other commodity, right? As there's more demand, we'll produce yeah. more. Yeah, but, but the difference in Bitcoin is that there's only ever going to be 21 million. Well, and that's, listen, there's something really interesting that I think that a lot of people haven't really talked about in the community. It, the dynamics of Bitcoin has cha have changed a lot since I've been in it. Um, you know, like, look, we're at 19.7 million of the total 21 million supply. 
the next four years are going to generate 657,000 more coins. Okay, so that puts us roughly in the, call it 20.3 million. The next, the, the remaining balance of coins are going to be minted between 2028 and 2041, right? So compared to like four years ago or even eight years ago, we're really getting towards the end of that 21 billion total supply, right? And so I think that we're about to enter a phase of scarcity, more, more or less, that we just haven't even seen in Bitcoin in the past, right? Um, because there's always been this like good chunk of new coins coming on the market, right? And those days have really, we're really at the point now with this having where we're, we're kind of changing that dynamic. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's, I think it's an interesting time for Bitcoin. I think there's a lot of change. Uh, there, there is more adoption. Um, for sure, you've got, I mean, look, what, my family are all medical professionals. They've done well in the system. The system has treated them well, I should say. They feel safe and secure in the system. And, you know, because of that, they're not really looking for other options, right? And they don't, they don't need to be looking for other options. But I think for your average person, you know, especially those on the lower, the lower end of the, the lower half, call it, of the socioeconomic status or the economic status, they're the ones that really feel the pinch because they can't buy assets, Right. Um, and we were on a space yesterday and if someone was talking about it, like, you know, Bitcoin being inaccessible or like a tool for the rich, I think that's complete bullshit, right? Like, sure, you might not buy a whole coin, but you can't go and buy like five or $10,000 of a house, right? And, and Bitcoin really, uh, uh, it, it gives people the ability to buy that hard asset that isn't going to get crushed by inflation, right? And that's the type of thing that, like, you know, as Sailor says, it, pre it preserves your economic power, right? Your economic um, energy that you've, you've generated over your lifetime. And uh, I, I really do, like, I'm a firm believer in this tech. Um, I, think, I think saving in fiat is, is a sucker's game at this point in time. Sure, there's volatility, but if you look at the performance of Bitcoin since, you know, since its inception, it's undoubtable, right? And even if you look at it since 2013, the gains and the rate of gains and the rate of performance versus any other currency is just unmatched. Um, so I, I think people like, you know, a lot of people miss out on that. And I, I'm probably, you know, preaching to the converted here. But um, I, I really do believe in the freedom money aspect of it. I, I don't like corporate control. I don't like government control. Um, and these random decisions that, that people make um, in an attempt to, like, try to shape your behavior in some way. And, you know, for our business, at least, it really allowed us a way out of that system, right? Um, and, and in doing so, you know, someone was talking about, like, you know, like you said, I've, I've been trading seeds for Bitcoin, right? Like, I grow a plant, and the plant produces seeds, and those we trade for Bitcoin. And then the Bitcoin continues to grow. Um, I, I do consulting for companies down in the States. I take my payment from them in Bitcoin. It's just easier than dealing with the bank. You know, I took a payment in 2021 for five grand and that's sitting there today in the same, in the same wallet and it's worth 13 grand, right? Like you just, that doesn't happen with regular currency and I'll pay the taxes when I sell the, when I sell it off, if I sell it off. Um, so, you know, you, you hear a lot of griping about Canada and I think that the, there is some fairness to it, but I, I like, I think mostly it's overblown by people that are like just ideologically misaligned with the current government. And again, I'm always going to be ideologically misaligned with any government. Like I, like I said before, I think they're all idiots. Um, and, you and know, I'm not idiots is one thing, man, but like, you know, when it starts moving into evil, okay. Like there's something going on here that like, I remember when you guys had freedom, like we did. But well, there's I, nothing that I can't do up here in Canada that I can't do in the States in the same way. We, we, you know, people love to say in the States, oh, there's no free speech in Canada. The caveat to that is there's no hate speech. You can say whatever the fuck you want as long as you're not inciting hatred against some other group. Yeah. Yeah. But see, what, 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 what does that mean? And because quite frankly, like I was called Dago and WAP 
most of my life up until probably 30 years old. What, what, what am I going to do, whine about it? I mean, dude, every person on the planet is a racist, right? We're all discriminating against each other all the time. Uh, we're competing. And, and look, you, like, can, you, you can say those words, but no, you, you can't. You can't Not say in Canada. Yes, you, you can. Just you, you can't what say. you just described is hate speech. Is a so no, it's not. Hey, no, you it's call wrong. You call me you are absolutely can you call, wrong. Can you call me I, Dago? And, and absolutely, get, you can. But what you can't say is kill all the Dagos. Right? There's a big difference in those two things. Well, bro, you can't say that about kill. kill you, you can't say, hey, I mean, come on. Like, yeah, if you, if you start but, but talking about killing though. people. That's the yeah, difference. It's like you're not, you can't that ain't speech hate speech, dude. That's murder alert. And there's That's also where they <laughs> trick you, where they trick you is they say, well, what is inciting violence? Because we see that here in the U.S. and they lose because of the First Amendment. But we see it over in Europe and we see it over in Canada where they take examples of people using any kind of language and they simply say, you incited this event. And as soon as they can draw that conclusion from point A to point B, then it becomes intent to harm. And the key question with any hate speech is, is there intent to harm, which becomes completely arbitrary depending on what your justice system is and what your ruling class is. And so those are the conversations that people don't like to have. And I've, I've heard this argued plenty of times, and it shows, it really just shows whatever bias someone has or their presuppositions or what kind of government they like, because the reality is you kind of do have to deal with certain absolutes, whether you like them or not. And as soon as you say, well, yeah, we just, we don't allow for hate speech. That's great. Well, that's got to be defined. And you may say, well, yeah, the definition is you can't go say kill this person. Yeah, but that definition, who made that definition? You don't have a set constitution with a freedom of speech. You have a law that was passed around what hate speech is. And with, depending on the government, that will just change. And we saw that, no, we see that true. here, that happens in the States. No, that happens all the time in every government. I was just watching a, um, oh, who was saying it? I was just watching a Twitter video, and they were actually, t it was actually, it was Scalia, never mind. It was Scalia who's dead now. He's given a presentation to, I think, the Senate on what makes Americans. And he was talking about how it's just not the Bill of Rights because the Soviet Union had a better Bill of Rights than the United States did. The Soviet Union offered better protections under their quote-unquote Soviet Union Bill of Rights than the U.S. did, but that didn't matter because the Bill of Rights was interpreted and enforced by that government for whatever that purpose was, right? And so hate speech laws are just so funny to me because really they're just an arbitrary excuse for whatever power, it, whatever political party is in power. And you can argue and, and try to psyop and say, you know, oh, it's not actually that bad. But, and maybe it's not bad for certain people who operate within that circle. But for those who operate on the periphery of ideas that aren't accepted by that circle, then yeah, it gets pretty bad. Um, well, I think I've you saw that. My with whole, I, I've spent my entire adult life as a fucking rebel criminal before legalization, I know all about being on the fringes. I don't um, think so. If you're, you're not really a, I mean, you can be a, there's a difference between being a, a rebel criminal who is operating within the system, which really isn't a rebel or criminal. We've got plenty of those, right? There's plenty of people who say, well, I'm going against the system, but you do it legally. That's perfectly fine. Right. Well, but that doesn't make you doesn't, like some rebel criminal. 2017. So let, like you're, you're not, you're not talking in realities here, my friend, and you're, you're talking in theoreticals. Canada does have a Bill of Rights. We have a Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We don't have a Constitution because we're a parliamentary system. But, like, these laws are not being used to just suppress random people, right? Can you give me an example of a Canadian that's been... I, I can. I was gonna. I was gonna live it up because I had to look at the article that I reported in my. Uh, I have an investor group on Telegram that uh, I have a lot of Canadians in there. They're close friends, and a lot of them. You know, some of them even came down to see me in Florida, which is fantastic. Um, but I do report on a lot of stuff because I want to make sure I look out for them and that kind of deal. And and if there's something crazy or whatever, like there was a broadcaster rule that was going to get passed and didn't get passed, which was good. But there was a Palestinian was Canadian that and if you remember in November of 23 um, he was charged with a specific phrase that had no hate words in it at all what was that so, phrase can you go deeper into detail 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me uh, pull it up real quick. One second. Uh, well, hey, while there. you're pulling that up, um, so let, let me let me ask a question to the Canadian. When were you guys required, mandated, obligated to wear a mask? In on transportation, like on public, no, on no, no, like, it, like public transportation and stuff okay, like that. So yeah. Yes. Were answer, you yes. were you pushed and mandated to get vaccines? You weren't mandated to, but it was like certainly work, highly encouraged to work. Yeah. Yes. Do you know people who lost their job because they wouldn't get the vaccine? There yeah. definitely were people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so were, so I, right? I, I'm gonna, I'm going to propose that that qualifies when you're under the threat of losing your fiat trash your income stream and you get all pressure from medical doctors and government officials and then your boss that's a lot of pressure dude so so it's let's say that i think that means you were forced to get vaccines but it was the same in, in the states too in certain places no, negative negative my friend okay i was here i wore a mask for less than one hour and 30 minutes the entire four years okay literally the only time i went wore a mask was when i went into a hospital um, so that did not happen here. Um, now I know people that submitted fell fucking right in line. And that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about censorship. Okay. There was a time not very long ago. Cause I've only been here like a year, or maybe less when people were like, Hey man, don't mention COVID too much, you know? So it's happening right now. Um, you and I are living in a much bigger universe than we could have 20 years ago, right? Now Canada and, and us, uh, America are connected in this conversation, at least, in a virtual sense. But we're connected nonetheless. And I'm telling you, dude, like I had much more fucking freedom than you did. And I still think I have more freedom than you do. I have no reason to slaughter or, or speak badly of Canada. Okay? I do not. I love Canada. Uh, I think it's sad, dude. You guys are so rich in resources. And, and you're, you're, you're not doing anything. And everyone I talk to, this Canadian, is so angry, but so quiet. Uh, I just think this is going to be a fight. See, that's my point. This is not going to come by free. Look at what Trump's going through. Say what you want about the guy, but I don't think anybody would put up with this stuff uh, if you were him. I mean, it would be a lot of pain to suffer. Uh, and that's, I think, I'm asking people to stand up. Um, and speak more loudly about what's not right here. Because these people have had hundreds of years to get this right, guys. Okay, they've had McKinsey, Cap Gemini, they've had all the great consultants, Henry Kissinger, the great genius of all mankind. They've had access to every scientist on the planet and they still fucked us up. Fucked it up unbelievably. So they will continue to print money, my friend. They will continue to print money because they can. And uh, we'll extend these loans out. This debt does not need to get paid back. It will never get paid back. See, that's the problem. Y'all should be standing up into the Canadians and going, hey, why are you charging me 48% when you know you can't pay it back anyway? It is mathematically impossible. So why pay it? Well, our, our, our uh, just debt to extend to Just to extend the heroin drip. Our, our our debt to D, G, our debt to GDP in Canada is like what sixty seven point six percent. In the states, you're at over one hundred and twenty. So we're we're in a little bit of a different situation with our with our debt. I think yours is running away. My my, my friend, when when we shit the bed, you are going down the tubes first. Oh, absolutely. Canada is like the first to go. <laughs> well, our supply yeah, chain, man. Like man, I want to so, give you uh, an opportunity to talk. What you got? Oh yeah, yeah. So it was the the phrase "from the river to the sea, Palestinian will be free." Palestine will be free. That was, was that was what he was arrested that? for. Yeah, was he he was arrested and charged um, for disturbing uh, disturbing the peace. That's what that's what it was there for. Disturbing the peace was what he was charged for. Interesting, but there's no hate speech in that. Uh, interesting. There isn't any hate speech. I mean, and, and he was just uh, very, very politely. And, and, you know, he was loud on his loudspeaker, but that was it. You know, and and expressing his so-called free speech that wasn't free. Free. Now, mind you, listen, listen, Ryan. I, I, I'll, I'm going to play devil's advocate on both sides because I do see a lot of stuff you're saying. Right? I get into these, like, discussions and debates with, with a lot of my, my Canadian uh, 
friends and community members, right? Free speech is an illusion, right? Why, what, what happened in the U.S. to Kanye West? Here, it was free speech that he, he should say whatever he wanted to say. What happened to him? And here's the other thing, and, and, and Gary, to, to go back on, 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 on the vaccine thing, this, this, this actually hurt me a lot because I'm, you know, I was, uh, um, uh, I'm an Air Force veteran, um, was that the military imposed the vaccine and those that didn't get the vaccine got discharged. Right now, they're trying to retrace that, you know, and go back on whatever now. But regardless of the fact, those people were hence discharged. And any of you that are mil prior military here or, or know anybody in the service, when you get discharged and you get that's like getting fired from the military, right? Unless there's honorable conditions, um, that's that's pretty much a crime. So you got let go from disobeying a direct order. So you were ordered to put a vaccine on. Now, when the military defense, they that's what you sign up for. Right. When you sign the 30, 40, 50 page document at MAPS, that's what you sign up for. You do what they say. But in the other words, they had to get the vaccine or they or they got let go. So that was uh, that was that's something that's, you know, there, there, there's quite a bit of double standards in pretty much every government. Right. No, ma no matter where you're at. Us in Florida, we thank thankfully, you know, we. Oh my God! We're, I think we're like a different country right now compared to what where where everything else is happening. Let alone California, New York, all the all the big cities, St. Louis, Chicago. I mean, it, it, we're literally a different place to live down here. We're so spoiled that the that the 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 extreme liberals that are here don't even know how good they have it. They think that the rest of the U.S. is great and we're bad. That that's incredible. I I mean I I literally t I, I got a new barber last night. I, t I told this uh, to my other friends. I got a new barber yesterday, and I was talking to him, and he was just going off on how horrible it's here. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I don't understand. If this is the same person that I'm talking to. I, I it's just yeah, man. It, it it's incredible, Sam. I can't still find him. <laughs> no, yeah. Let me know who that new barber is because I just got a new barber too. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, <laughs> maybe it's yeah, the same guy. It. I'm still trying to find a good barber around here, and I'm so scared of just someone butchering my hair right before I have some business meeting or something. It's my greatest fear. Uh, listen, guys, I don't think we're going to do this space too much longer. We're already over 90 minutes. want to be respectful of everybody's time, so I'm going to call on just a few people up here who we haven't given the chance to speak yet. Uh, I see 100 trillion. Uh, what's going on, boss? What do you got to tell us? You can talk about Bitcoin. You can talk about free speech. I know we kind of got off topic there, but always good to have these friendly debates and discussions. It's why we're here. So what's going on, man? For sure. Yeah. Um, Canada, quite frankly, is fucked. I mean, I have <laughs> half of my family is up in Canada and, you know, I have like relatives that have houses down here in the Sun Belt, and then they go back up. And when they were going back up to Canada, they had to cross the border and then for the two weeks after that, they had police come to their house. I don't know if it was daily, but police were actually coming to their house to verify that they were quarantining at home. So that's a police state. And we've heard Trudeau talk about China and how he loves it. But really what I'd like to talk about is the question on here, which is, is Bitcoin good or bad for society? And I think the narrative is going to be that it's horrible, especially if it continues to grow and, and, and no one can stop it. I think people are going to continue to fight it until it's... You know, it's probably going to take a decade or so. But overall, I think the long-term trend of this is super, super good for society because what we have right now is kind of a culture of people that are kind of lifting the veil, right? We, we can see it all over the place. And Bitcoin is really the core fundamental problem of a lot of these Band-Aid issues like politics and the left versus right and all this other shit that we're seeing. So I think it's, it's, it's going to be great for society because what it'll do is it'll take individuals like you and me and it'll, it'll give us a little more means, right? And if you want to affect change in the world, you have to have capital. So <clears throat> along with the culture change, it's also going to kind of hopefully even out, even out the, the rich and the poor situation that, 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 that keeps on continuing to get worse. Alex Leishman posted a great graph showing the Bitcoin ownership distribution. And I think it's like 57% of Bitcoin held right now is in the hands of individuals. So super bullish. Awesome. That's all I got. No, that's awesome. And I didn't, I'm, it's always good to hear some of those stats. How many, can you repeat that? How many individuals hold Bitcoin? What was that percentage of total? Percentage 57. is 50, is 57%. And then you have businesses at 3.6%, at funds, ETFs at 3.9%. 
governments at 2.7% and miners at 34 So this is this is power for the people. Where where's the the where is the I don't see 100% there. It's 57%. Yeah, well, he, it's the the total to be three, mined is six point six percent on his on his graph there. Eleven at about three. That's only eleven, but it's only eleven. Uh, oh, these are percentages. What an idiot! Thank you, man. Sorry. All good. But yeah, I mean, we're 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 going to see a lot of normal people that have kind of the the silent generation. I think are are going to start to understand money, right? It doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right or whatever. And once you understand that you've been lied to, you know, humanity has been lied to for the last 2000 years, it, it's, it's almost like a religious experience, right? It's like, holy shit. And the more people that experience that and become Bitcoiners and have this new mindset of challenging, you know, the status quo, whether it be public, the public school system, I mean, the whole nine yards, it's, I, I truly think that Bitcoin could fuel a peaceful revolution, right? Because the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is it's, it's just a way to defend yourself, right? Like, I'm going to hide behind this huge wall of energy and fuck you. I don't want to say it's a defensive weapon, but it could be construed as that. And, I mean, what's, what's more awesome than that, where you can say fuck you to every federal government across the globe by just buying Bitcoin and not having to attack anybody or shoot any bullets, just peacefully saying, you know what, I'm opting out. Dude, don't even get Gary started on public schools. <laughs> or schools in general. As soon as I heard that, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> right, Gary? Dude, really, my, my Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, well, guys, thanks for coming tonight. We, we're traveling tomorrow, so I, I agree, Sam. Let's cut, shut this down. Um, you guys have a great week. Sam, closing comments or anybody else that's uh, on the panel that has anything that they just got to get out? No, thank you guys as always for coming on the space. We may be moving these to five, so just put that, lock that away in your brain. We might start doing these at five uh, just to give more time to speak, but then also maybe access different parts of the world for our friends in Europe. Um, but, hey, just keep that in mind. Love when you guys come on. Appreciate all the retweets in the comments. You guys are the best. You're what makes these spaces so awesome. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in.